Welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. In this session, we're going to use a Landsat thematic mapper image from 1986 compared to a Landsat thematic mapper image from 1995 to map defoliation of aspen by an insect named the Large Aspen Tortrix. So if you go to the Aspen Tortrix folder, you'll find those two rasters. And the first thing we'll do is we'll display our rasters as color infrared images. So our first raster is from June 15th, 1986, and it's Landsat Thematic Mapper Bands 2, 3, 4. So Band 4 in Thematic Mapper is near infrared, Band 3 is red, and Band 2 is green. So we need to assign the near infrared to our red video intensity assign the red spectral region to the green and then assign the green spectral region to the blue and then two standard deviations and then just OK so then we have something that looks like a color infrared photograph and then we'll apply the same color combination to our 1995 raster so the 1995 raster is from 11 August 1995 and if we go to symbology, we could import the symbology from our other layer from 1986. And then just OK and OK. So here we have the Tanana River. And then we've got in the uplands, aspen and birch. Typically aspen's on south facing slopes, birch is on the north facing slopes. So here we have 1986 and then 1995. So this area has been defoliated in 1986 by the large Aspen Tortrix. So once again, 1986, all this area has been defoliated. So 1986 and 1995. Okay, so our first step is we'll do an unsupervised classification of both rasters to create 10 spectral classes and then we'll reclassify those 10 spectral classes. So first step, unsupervised classification. Okay, so our input will be our 1986 raster. It's a three band raster. We'll specify 10 spectral classes and the output will be spectral classes 1986. And then just okay. And then we'll repeat the process for the 1995 raster. So from geoprocessing results, I could recall my tool and then just change my input into the 1995 raster. And then my output, I'll change to 1995. And then just okay. Okay, so what we're trying to do is isolate those pixels that in 1986 were defoliated and then in 1995, they were broadly forest pixels. So what we'll do is for the 1986 spectral class, we need to determine those pixels that had low canopy. So we'll first turn all the pixels so they're clear. So if I go to properties, select class number one, and then holding the shift key down, select class number 10, and then double click no color for all 10 spectral classes. Okay, so then what we could do is color code those spectral classes that in 1986 had a low vegetation canopy. So that would be black spruce woodland and the classes that were defoliated aspen. So for example, class five and class six and class seven, we'll color code those to be a color green. So here we have spectral classes five, six, and seven. And you can see those had fairly low canopy. They're not broadleaf forest pixels. And then we might choose using the identify tool, another class. So for example, class four, so we'll color code class four the same color. So here in green are spectral classes four, five, six, and seven. 
And what we'll do now is reclassify those using the reclassify tool to be a value of one, which would be low canopy pixels. Okay, so our input is the spectral classes from 1986. So if we click on unique, we want everybody to be zero except for classes four, five, six, and seven. So one or zero will be a one, and then four, five, six, and seven will be a one. Okay, so everybody's a zero except for class four, five, six, and seven, and those will represent low veg canopy in 1986, and then just okay. Okay, and then we'll color code values that are zero, no color, and values that are one will give it some, I'll give it a yellow color, and then just okay. So everything in yellow was classified, classified to be a low vegetation canopy pixel. So it's basically either black spruce woodland or uh, aspen that's been defoliated. Okay, so then we do the opposite for 1995. We want to get all those pixels that were broadly forest pixels from 1995. So if we look at the spectral class values from 1995, we can use the identify tool. So class 10 was broadleaf forest. Class 9 was broadleaf forest. So we'll color code those a green color. So if I hold the shift key down, no color for all the classes in class 9 and 10, we'll color code it to be green. Okay, so then we've got some remaining broadleaf pixels, so let's see what they are. So class 8 and class 8, so we'll color code class 8 to be green. Okay, so we've got all the Aspen pixels and more, basically all the Bradley Forest pixels from 1995. So we want to reclassify these to have a value of one. And if you're not a Bradley Forest pixel, you're reclassified to be a value of zero. Okay, so once again, our spectral classes eight, 9 and 10 were broadly forest pixels, so they'll be reclassified to be a value of 1, and all the other values will be reclassified to be a value of 0. And then we output that to broadly vegetation canopy 1995.tiff, and then OK. So all the pixels that have values of 1, I color coded to be a yellow color. And you can see it covers all the aspen canopy areas. Okay, so our final step is what was the pixels that were low vegetation in 1986 and then broadleaf uh, forest canopy vegetation in 1995. Okay, so we can use the raster calculator. So a one in this raster represents a pixel that had low vegetation canopy. A one in this raster represents a pixel that was a broadly forest canopy in 1995. So one times a one will give us the defoliated aspen that were recovered in 1995, but they were defoliated in 1986. And then just OK. And then we'll change our symbology so the zeros are transparent and the one is some other color. So everything in yellow is being portrayed as areas that were defoliated in 1986, so these areas here. And then in 1995, they were forest canopy. Okay, so what we want now is we want to isolate the large patches of aspen that were defoliated. So to do that, we'll use the region group tool. So basically, region group, take our defoliated aspen pixels, and if they're connected, they'll become a group. So that will give us a new output where we'll have the values represent group number one, group number two, group number three, and then just OK. And also exclude value zero because one represented defoliated aspen. OK, so we have 2,279 groups and that's the values, just the group number. 
the link is what the original pixel value was. So there are this many pixels that were not defoliated Aspen. We've got lots of isolated pixels that were just one pixel that was defoliated Aspen. So if you sort descending on count, here are our big patches. So let's say we want all the patches where we had 100 connected pixels. So our next tool we could use would be the con tool to get those large patches that have a count above 100 and a link of 1. Okay, so we use the con tool, and the question is going to be, for these groups, give us the groups where the count is above 100 pixels and the link is 1. And if that's true, return a value of 1. If it's false, return no data. And then I'll just output that to defoliated groups greater than 100 pixels dot tiff, and then just OK. Okay, so here's our June 15, 1986 image, and here's all the large 100 pixel groups that in June 1986 had a low broadleaf canopy coverage. And then here we have 1995, and here's all the areas that were broadleaf canopy. So you notice we have some false positives in the Tanana Flats. So if we wanted to, we could convert these pixels to polygons and then select these that were in the Tananoff Flats and then eliminate them as polygons. So our final step will be raster to polygon tool. Then we could create a polygon using the raster to polygon tool, output it to RAS, Aspen Tortrix 1986 infestation patches.shp, and then just OK. There's our final polygons. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, I've got some quiz questions for you concerning this exercise, mapping areas that were defoliated in 1986.